Okay, my name is Carol Sorendo. I'm a visual artist, designer. I've always been interested in art, but I suppose my serious professional career as an artist started, I'd say about 25 years ago, really. And um, so I paint, I design, do design work. I studied interior design. And I, t and I decided to take my career more seriously as an artist and focus on painting, um, natural dyes and textiles. Mm. I started my creative um, career as an interior designer and worked in that industry for quite a few years. Um, but I got a little bit frustrated with that because it was restricting working to other people's designs. So I decided to become a freelance artist and focus on my own work instead. And also in my work, I use my work as a therapy, a therapy both for myself, but also to work with people for therapeutic benefits. Um, my art is um, nature inspired, primarily nature inspired. I draw inspiration from things around me like trees and plants in particular. Um, but I'm also interested in the history of these plants. So um, I lived in England and um, I, I grew up in Dominica, but I was born in England and I did all my childhood years in Dominica and then I moved back to England and recently I've returned to Dominica to live and this is my first solo show in Dominica. The title Deep Rooted is quite significant because for me the roots are the things that connect you to your history, connects you to the landscape. Um, I feel that I am deep rooted in Dominica. Dominica is my passion. It's something that's kept me, I suppose, sane and hopeful really, living in England. It's something that's kept me very strong, knowing that I have a connection to Dominica, but also knowing that I have a connection to Africa, because that's somewhere I also feel as part of my roots, that ancestral connection through our history. Um, so Deep Rooted was significant in that sense, but it was also a way of um, exploring work that connects people to Dominican soil through the history, through the land, through agriculture, looking at some of the plants that might have symbolic meanings, looking at some of the plants that we overlook in the landscape, like the weeds and the things that we take for granted, really, that have um, positive benefits that are beautiful, not only beautiful, but also they have therapeutic and herbal qualities. Um, so Deep Rooted is a way of connecting and just highlighting things that people might forget, digging deep in the roots, um, highlighting things that are forgotten, also highlighting emotion that we forget and we don't often explore. Um, so it's quite a huge title really, lots of layers of meaning in that title, Deep Rooted. I like people to connect to their emotions through the history. There's lots of trauma that we don't address. There are lots of social issues that we don't address that come through the history and our roots um, of um, African enslavement. Things we don't always want to explore, but it's necessary for us to move forward as a nation. This collection is, um, it features work which go back over a few years of my creative career. So I'll start with Ancestral Spirits, which are works that are created on wood, working with the wooden veneers. And these are quite emotive pieces and they draw a lot of emotions in people that look at them because it's about connecting to ancestral past. They were inspired by my dad who passed away about 20 years ago and this group of work came out of that. Um, in the collection, there's also my MA work, which are large textile hangings, which look at balancing history. So 
the textile hangings that are dyed with natural plant dyes, but they feature, one features um, a mill, a sugar plantation, which is in Cassibus in Dominica. And that is, Cassibus very dear to me because it's the home of my grandma and a kind of ancestral link to that place. Um, it features sugarcane rollers, and on that is also an archival document dated 1777, which relates to that site, which I found in England. Um, I also balance that with an ancient history, so the other textile hangings are looking at ancient Nubian history, which is Egyptian history and the symbolism, which is also very significant. And then along with that, there are also some beautiful drawings of plants and things that are found in, in Dominica, um, like the African tulip, um, Meze Mawi, which we often see around us, um, and a survival series which features plants that um, I noticed growing quite prolifically after Maria. And um, so I've incorporated tarpaulin into these pieces. So looking at tarpaulin as something that's kept us safe, but also a fragility to tarpaulin, um, which explores the fragility of life and the fragility of our landscape as well. Um, growing, up in, growing up in Dominica, I am very lucky to have family that are connected to the land, family who are farmers, who are heavily into agriculture, and also keen gardeners. I think that agriculture in Dominica is the way to go. This is what Dominica has for it, the land, the, f the fertility of the soil, the water, the sunshine. Um, this exhibition, through this exhibition, I hope to encourage young people to go into agriculture, take more interest in their environment, take more interest in planting things, finding out about the benefits and the qualities of the plants. Um, eat local food, eat yam. There's a piece titled Babalawa, which is looking at the yam, which was celebrated in Africa as a food, a life-giving food and in Africa they hold festivals about the yam. Many of our young children don't want to eat local foods, they're quite happy eating Kentucky and imported stuff. And I also noticed that like, even after Maria, um, there's fruit on the trees and people aren't picking them, you know, there, there's guavas and mangoes and um, yeah, the, Dominica provides us with everything we need in life, you know, it's not about material things. Um, we aspire to material things, but Maria shows us that these can go in the puff of a wind. And it's about life and family and uh, connection to the land that's really important. Simplifying things a little more. And also, yeah, I hope to encourage young artists. Um, some schools came through the exhibition and the feedback's been really encouraging. Um, yeah, the art scene in Dominica is uh, growing and hopefully we'll keep doing so. I'm going to recite half of a poem that was featured in this exhibition. Um, the half that relates to the site in Dominica, the Cassibrus site and it's titled, If Only Trees Could Talk. If only trees could talk, they'd talk in healing whispers of babies gouged from swollen wombs and scarred brown sugarbacks, of moonlight fire dances to drumbeat rhythms and soulful melodies in fields of sticky molasses. They'd talk of tangled histories, concealed mysteries of knowledge lost and loved ones gone and families split. If only trees could talk, they'd talk of freedom flights, resilient spirits united in resistance, of twisted shoots, entangled roots. They'd talk of healing herbs in rich red soil and sunshine yellow flowers.